Here is a 1977 Braun model PC4000 3-in-1 compact stereo system and a pair of 1979 Canton model GLE50 three-way speakers. The compact stereo is protected by a smoked plexiglass cover, which is in very good condition except for a crack in the upper right corner, which you may or may not be able to see on video. However, it does not stay up on its own anymore, so for the duration of this video, I will remove it. This system and the speakers were an offer on a local classifieds website for free, believe it or not. Now, I don't have any space to put a system like this, and you can tell it's sitting on the floor right now because, yes, I don't have a better place to put it. But I found the system interesting, very interesting, and so, just as sort of a conversation starter, I sent the link to a friend of mine, and guess what? This friend wanted to have the system. So, I drove out, I picked it up, and here it is. Waiting for the friend to do his next long-distance trip down to over here. Now, I should mention you will notice the system does need to be cleaned, and there are some minor things wrong with the system, which I will get into over the course of this video. Now, before you say, well, why didn't you clean the system before making the video? Why didn't you repair any of this before making the video? I'm not doing any of that. This system does not belong to me. I have absolutely no doubts my friend will do a very thorough, full restoration of the system. I will leave all of the things that need to be done to him. But enough of that. Let's get in a bit closer. The power switch is over here. We then have a mono stereo switch. Tape 1, tape 2, phono, FM, long wave, medium wave, short wave, FM muting, and an auto frequency control. Up above, we have these faders for the amplifier section. We have a volume fader. We have a basically a balance control. You have two faders, one for each channel, and you can reduce the volume of each one of the channels individually. And yes, these faders are a little bit scratchy. We have a bass control and treble control fader, and then this fader, labeled filter, is an adjustable subsonic filter. So you can have it off or on, and then you can uh, shift the cutoff frequency with this fader. Right here is the main radio section. We have the big dial for FM, long wave, medium wave and short wave and then in addition to the big fm dial we have these six dials right here for six fm presets and there is this little uh, plug recessed into the unit you can pop it out and stick it in there to adjust the presets another nice detail is here are the selectors for the presets and the large dial that's over here. Now you can see all over this unit we have these touch sensitive buttons. They're basically just two strips of metal and you short them out with your finger to activate the function. And these are the presets and Braun delivered this system with a wide variety of little plugs with station names on them. And these plugs pop out. They are interchangeable, so you could customize what the labeling of the presets said. Let's get the radio going for just a quick demonstration. 
Bitte vorsichtig fahren auf der A2 Hannover Richtung Braunschweig zwischen Braunschweig Hafen und Kreuz Braunschweig Nord. Dort gefahrt durch eine Ölspur auf der Fahrbahn. Er staubt in beide Richtungen. Und dieses neue Buch. I can activate the FM muting. That cuts out the noise. Köln, Hoffenheim, 2 zu 3. Informiert. Ja. A352 ja. ab B502. Beim besten Partywetter. Eine Baustelle bis morgen 22. And we have all the presets. Mit dem für Ed Sheeran 2012. Now, these ones don't work. They've been programmed for stations that don't. Well, that, that don't exist on that frequency anymore. Oh, there is something. But back to the large dial. So that is the radio section. I'm not going to demonstrate any of the AM bands. It's kind of pointless because there are no more AM stations left in Germany. Moving on to the cassette deck, we first come across a bit of an oddity. The amplifier section has these two inputs, tape 1 and tape 2, but there are two DIN jacks in the back that correspond with these inputs. So to activate the internal cassette deck, you first have to switch to tape 1, and then there is a separate power switch for the internal cassette deck. And it's a good thing that it's there because, as you can hear, the capstan motor runs all the time. So with this power switch, when you're not using the cassette deck, you can turn it off and save the lifetime of the capstan motor. This cassette deck is surprisingly fancy for a compact stereo system. It's a two-head deck but it does have two motors. It's logic controlled by solenoids. And well, as for the other features and functions, up here is the tape counter with the reset and memory button. Something that I have never seen is right here. There is a lens in front of the tape counter that you can swivel to adjust it to your viewing angle and when you have it adjusted correctly, this lens magnifies the digits of the counter. There is a power button, Dolby noise reduction, and a ferrochrome override switch. There is an automatic tape selector for ferro and chrome up in there, but the ferrochrome cassette you have to select manually. Over here is the level adjustment for recording. There is the level meter, microphone input, rewind, fast forward, play, stop, record, and pause. Now, the cassette deck does sound rather muffled. And the heads are clean, so it's probably just a problem with the azimuth adjustment of the head. So that's easy to repair. The cassette deck maybe does run a little bit slow, but aside from that, quite amazingly, it does work. There is fast forward and rewind. And as you can see, there are absolutely no problems. And last, but definitely not least, we have the record player. And there is the phono input on the amplifier section, but again, 
In addition to the internal record player, there is also a phono input DIN jack in the back, so you can use an external record player alternatively. The internal record player is fully automatic. It's fitted with a Shure M95 cartridge, which will definitely need a new needle. You can actually see in the chassis where the needle has left a scratch. So clearly the previous owners, even when moving the system, never used the arm lock, which is there. Now, the chassis is a floating chassis. It's resting on springs, as you can see. And, well, let's put on a 45. And with this being an automatic record player, all you have to do is actuate the 45 touch control. There is a mute function, so you never hear the needle landing on the record. Push stop, and let's replace the 45 with an LP. And again, it's as easy as just simply touching 33. Unfortunately, this fully automatic record player does have one limitation. You cannot play 12-inch singles, because those are 12 inches in size, but they play at 45. However, if you select 45, the record player not only switches speed, it also changes the position of the tone arm. Now, certainly the most interesting feature of this record player, however, is this control over here. Let's demonstrate that. Now, as you can see, we have some touch-sensitive buttons integrated into that. We do have the arm lift, so I can lift the arm. I can lower it again, but the most amazing thing about this control is if you touch it in the center, it lifts off the arm, and if you then move this control, it moves the arm accordingly. Now, it's not a variable speed control, but even this is quite amazing. And if you let go, it drops the arm back down. This is quite a fantastic feature. I've never seen anything like this before, and I, I really like this. But that's it for the record player. So, there you have it. The 1977 Braun model PC4000 stereo system. What an absolutely fantastic device. I like this, I really do, and I'm glad that my friend decided to get it. Thank you for watching.